From LEX 18, your official UK sports station for Big Blue Nation, this is BBN Tonight. Presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. Welcome to BBN Tonight. I'm Josh Barry. And I'm Maggie Davis. Keith and Anna both have the night off, but there is a lot for us to get to because we are less than 24 hours away from Kentucky basketball's next game. We're previewing the Cats versus the Commodores tonight. Plus a one-on-one -on -one interview with Shaden Sharp and a behind-the-scenes look at Kentucky's win over Kansas. That's all coming up in the next few minutes. But Maggie, they say time flies when you're having fun. That's where we'll start tonight for tonight's Big Blue Story presented by CHI St. Joseph Health. The Cats take on Vanderbilt tomorrow night in Rupp looking to sweep the Commodores on the season after having already won in Nashville. The game will mark the halfway point in Southeastern Conference play. Hard to believe it's already February. Mm -hmm. Here's a look at the current conference standings. The Cats are sitting in second. Looking up at Auburn, UK will need the Tigers to lose to have a shot at the top seed. And the Cats have little separation from third place, so every game matters. That's right, even the ones against teams at the bottom of your league. And hey, championship teams, they win the games they're supposed to. Coach Cal says it all starts in practice. My best teams here, and you've heard me say this before, never had a bad practice. You've heard me say that. Yep. This team hasn't had a bad practice. Not one. Now, some of them are way better, like, wow. But the other one is really good. It's just not, like, ridiculous. We've had some of the most ridiculously good practices since I've been here. We have not had a bad practice. Every day I walk in, I have an idea what to expect. Well, let's bring in a guy now who's seen quite a few of those practices. Mike Pratt of the UK Sports Network joins us now. And Mike, you've been around a lot of basketball teams. What comes to mind for you when you hear Calipari say they've only had good days in the gym so far? I think he's pretty daggone lucky because <laughs> a lot of teams I played on, we had some bad days and we had a lot of good days. Obviously, you want your good days to happen uh, right before a, a big game. And uh, Wednesday night's a big game with Vanderbilt. Don't be fooled by their record of two and five. They're a dangerous team. And that's the beauty and the beast of the SEC. The top is loaded, but the teams at the bottom, they can play. Absolutely. And Mike, Scotty Pippen Jr., he's a handful. He had Kentucky's number last game, dropping 32 points and did it fairly efficiently, too, taking only 18 shots. The Cats still won that game big, but they had their own 30-point score with Oscar Shibwe. Anytime an opponent has a guy like Pippen, you have to make someone else beat you. Listen to what Chin Coleman had to say. They had a kid that got 30 points on us last time we played him. So first and foremost, he's at the top of our scouting report. we got to do a better job with him. Also trying to continue to duplicate what we did with the other guys, but you can't you can't let guys get 30 points. I, I think um, that you know a guy like him that gives you a chance that can beat you. When you got a guy that can beat you, you 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 got to try to uh, stop that particular person or player from beating you. Now, Mike, UK might get a little different look this time around from Pippen now that Vandy's other guard, Rodney Chapman, is back playing. Coach Stackhouse has had Pippen playing more off the ball. Does that change things for Kentucky? The Cats have quietly been playing great defense lately. Well, Chapman does make a difference, okay? He's a nice young ball player. Wright is a good young ball player. Where Vandy's going to have problems, and they had it in uh, Nashville, is matching up with Oscar. And if Keon plays the way Keon did Saturday at the fall, they're going to have a hard time with him. Which leads me to believe we did see, I went back and looked at the ball game. We did see Vandy play. They were in and out of the zone. And I, and I think that's probably what we'll see uh, Wednesday night. They'll be in and out of different zones trying to control the pace of the game. They don't want to go fast like Kentucky. They want to play it on the half court. So how do you change that pace? Well, you make some shots, obviously, but then defensively you try to put your opponent, which is Kentucky, on their heels by switching up defense. An interesting stat about the last ball game. Pippen had a terrific game. I believe he made 13 field goals. Do you know what the rest of the team made as far as field goals? 11. 11. He needs some help, folks. He needs some help to upset Kentucky. <laughs> the other thing about this game is Kentucky had a big lead. Vandy down the stretch, the end of the ball game, Vandy outscored him 16 to nothing. Kentucky took the foot off the pedal, let Vandy get closer. Vandy 
They're watching tape. They see it. They've got to come in and think, hey, if we play our best game of the year, we got a shot. Well, Mike, you said it. Scotty Pippen needs some help. Vandy's a team where one person really stands out at the top of the scouting report. Kentucky just isn't like that. We've seen different guys go off all season. How much of a burden does that present for the Cats opponents, Mike? And what do you think the scouting report on Kentucky is looking like? Well, I, I think that now that Keon had a game like that and, and Toppin is playing well, they're kind of interchangeable parts, depends on who has a big game. And Kellen Grady, is, uh, he's been streaky, but I'll tell you, his defense has stepped up. He did a nice job on Ajabaji out of Kansas. And, and can, he can run six in a row after missing seven. So if I'm Vanderbilt, again, I have to control the pace. I want to make sure I want the pace, go deep in the shot clock, and then I'm in and out of the zones. I just try, after watching Kansas went to a zone, momentarily stunned Kentucky with their rhythm. Then Kentucky broke the code, as they say, and figured it out. But if I'm the Indy, I throw everything I have at Kentucky. Everything. And we just mentioned Lance where hey, he's not. It's all about somebody making shots. Right, right. And we just mentioned Lance where he's taken a step forward since SEC play started. Going against Oscar every day in practice has probably helped with that. Mike, listen to this. He's probably going to be in the talks for, you know, National Player of the Year. Uh, going up against him every day is a blessing. Um, obviously got me way better. Uh, the physicality part, um, being able to try to rebound against him, uh, box him out, stuff like that, because you're not going to find that too often, somebody that's built like him and can do the things that he could do. So honestly, it's just, I, I love it. Even though it's a challenge every day, but that's good. That's what I came here for, uh, you know, a challenge, and I definitely get that with Oscar. So do you beat up on him some days in practice? Yeah, I beat up on him most days. <laughs> Love the well, honesty there, Mike. Not a lot of time here, but how important has he been? How important is defense? Lance Ware. How, how important has Lance Ware been for this team down the stretch? How, how important? Oh, listen, I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. He's really important. I, I kind of put him in the back of my mind early season because he was struggling. But here over the last three or four weeks, he has become a factor off the bench. Here's the key about playing off the bench. Don't do something to hurt your team's chances. Be positive. At the worst case, have a break-even situation. Lance Ware right now is a positive uh, influence in the game when he comes off the bench. Totally agree. And he has such a good attitude about it, too. So, Mike, thank you so much for your time. Always appreciate it. And look forward to hearing your call uh, tomorrow night. Thank you for having me. Coming up, a behind-the-scenes look at Kentucky's win over Kansas, including the pregame message Coach Cal had for his team. We'll be right back.